Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of a Blackwater Town by Paul Waters. So this is published by Unbound. Paul was actually one of the uh, guest speakers at one of my uh, online writing workshops at Wickham Art Centre, so I thought it was about time I checked out his book. Uh, we have on the front, Is Betrayal the Only Way to Survive? I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Dane reads... When Maverick Police Sergeant Jolly Macken is banished to the sleepy 1950s Irish border village of Blackwater Town, he vows to find the killer of his brother, even if the murderer is inside the police. But a lot can happen in a week. Over seven days, Macken falls in love, uncovers dark family secrets, accidentally starts a war and is hailed a hero and branded a traitor. When Blackwater Town explodes into violence, who can he trust? Nobody, basically. So I want to start off with this uh, delightfully Irish thing. And that is this sentence here, um, we get this like procession going on. At a barked command, the drums and fifes were roused, and Big Jim Courtney began to batter the thunder and bejesus out of his big lamb bag. There's a lot of just like little Irishisms in this, which I, I very much enjoyed. Here I just thought this was good, very like good characterization. Macken hunched over his tea. No one paid him any attention. Not the women with bags of shopping, nor the elderly gent, smartly dressed, still making an effort, squinting at a newspaper, nodding with approval. Only one section could give such obvious satisfaction, the obituaries, each entry a victory for the reader still living. And so we get a character called Aoife Penny, which just makes me think of Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing. And then uh, somebody accidentally discharges a firearm in the police car, and then they decide to fake it and make it look as though the IRA attacked them. And we get this little uh, excerpt. Didn't I tell you to aim high, you big glaive? Thereby letting us survive the ambush by ducking beneath the windows, safely exiting the vehicle, without having to deal with, thanks to you, the flat tyre. You'll notice I broke a lot of the glass, but left the doors and the wheels alone. Sorry, I didn't think. Gracie sighed. Open the boot and see if the spare is still in one piece. And then um, we get this little bit where Mackin's sent to the pub and we get... Mackin's job was to roust out the regulars from Blackwater Town's only public house. Standard duty. The main thing was not to rush in and catch people unawares, live and let live. There was a routine to be gone through, to give those inside time to gulp down their dregs and exit out back. That way law and order was preserved, and the drinkers got home before they became too incapacitated to walk or work in the morning. For they were, most of them, hard workers. And for all their complaints, they were happy for the constable to ease them from their cosy snug into the night and back towards home. And McGuinness, who ran the bridge bar, was pleased to be able to blame the police, rather than having to personally evict and risk offending his tipsy regulars. Otherwise, he would never get to bed himself. We get the line, uh, no rest for the wicked, eh? And obviously, my first book was called No Rest for the Wicked, so that was enjoyable for me. And we get this little line, another great little bit of just characterization, I think. He clattered back down to where Sergeant Gracie was filling a large teapot. Finally, we have proof that you're a real policeman. The ability to sniff out tea the instant it's made. That line could almost belong in a Discworld novel, you know? And uh, this setting the time period it's in, so... Um, He's reading the paper. A picture of a dog caught his eye. He gets my vote, thought Macken. That's some pub, eh? Macken looked up to see Lena leaning in her doorway. Dogs in space. What do they think of next? Macken looked again at the newspaper. The picture was of a Russian dog, which had indeed been blasted off in a rocket to orbit the planet. He shook his head in wonder. And then later on he's thinking, like, somebody says, like, oh, it won't be long until we get rockets around here. And he's like, oh, dear God, like, that's the last thing we need. The dog, Kalan, Macken remembered, paused at the box of vegetables in front of a shop. This time he ignored the chain hand as Macken watched, lifted a leg and began to relieve himself over a crate of King Edwards. Macken's jaw dropped, but it was his pointing hand that caught Lena's eye. She turned to see Colan come into the end of his flow. A great yell erupted from her. Yeah! That mutt is pissing over my potatoes! And uh, we get this as well, which is sort of paraphrased from like a well-known uh, thing that you might have heard of before. So um, Macken says that, this, that Aoife is sweating. She reared at him. Have you no manners at all, you great gullum? If only horses sweat, ladies such as myself merely glow. What about men? asked Macken. Apparently men perspire, though I've never seen one work hard enough to prove it. And then there's an attack um, on a building, basically, and we get this, which is just hilarious. It made me laugh quite a bit. Turning his head, he found the jagged boundary of the world he knew. There was still an upstairs at the back of the house, but it looked as if some giant beast had taken a huge bite out of the building. Wood and roof tiles and bricks and plaster were falling from the edge of the great gash. Macken could see into the back room upstairs. The internal wall was barely there, and clinging to the edge of it was a large white-rimmed eye, the black pupil glaring balefully down at him as he lay in the dust and debris. Macken thought he must be hallucinating or dying. From the great eye came a loud screech. It jumped up and away from the edge of the splintered floor. Suddenly, through the billowing murk, Macken saw the great eye for what it really was. 
He realised it was Bull's arsehole, framed in what remained of the upstairs toilet, winking down at him. So uh, here we get that bit that I referenced with the rockets. Um, this is towards the end. Mackin felt tired. He prodded his sandwich. It felt tired too. We're all tired, he thought. There's no appetite for martyrdom for Mother Island anymore. We're stuck with each other. 20 years from now, we'll have outgrown this nonsense. By then, it will not just be dogs in space. We'll probably be sending people to the moon. Give us some new territory to scrap over. Orange marches on the moon, thought Macken. That would be a sight. They could chuck moon rocks at each other. And then just in the thank yous at the end, he gives a thank you to Stephen Colgan, uh, who is, he co-presented the writer's workshop that, that, um, that Paul did for us at, at the Art Centre. Uh, I've read a few of his books, most recently uh, Corrings as well. So I do recommend uh, Stephen Colgan's work. And he also shouts out Zoe and Mark Page. Uh, and he says, if it's atmospheric photos you want, go to the award-winning Mark Page. And uh, he took like a few of my old photos and a band photo and a few other bits. He's a great local photographer. So yeah, Blackwater Town. Uh, it's like a definitely got the thriller elements, but there's like a subtle humour throughout it. Quite a dark sense of humour. Lots of great stuff in it if you're familiar with Ireland and in particular with the Troubles as well. It did, uh, it did feel a little bit on the long side at some points, but in other points there were definitely lots of twists and turns and bits that keep you guessing. Um, and I didn't think it was predictable or anything like that. So overall I gave it a pretty strong 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of Blackwater Town by Paul Waters. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bunch of videos. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.